Yeah, narrates items from that. What is a hostile building? So now you're going to present some. Yeah. So now how are you going to you I would have to you'd have to log into yeah. this Zoom meeting. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I need a password for the meeting and we don't yeah, just right. Run. That's what I, I emailed. Yeah. 360071. Okay. Out of town last week, so I didn't have access to my computer to be able to do everything. There you are, Robbie. Okay. So, um, first order of business is approving minutes. And as I said, I was out of town, so I thought it was better just to list uh, dates for minutes and we can uh, clarify because some of these meetings minutes may have been approved, but I said, Myself, well, I'm, since I don't have access, I would put them down and say, okay, whether they've been approved or ready or that's where yeah. I was going. Yeah. Um, is anybody else taking minutes? If not, I can do so. Yes, let's ask that question first. All right, I'll take minutes. Okay, thanks, Lee. Okay, so April 15th, is that one of the meetings? I that believe we already I believe the 15th has been May 6th, I think, maybe not. May 6th, uh, yeah, maybe not. So has anyone reviewed May 6th? So I believe I wrote drafted the May 6th minutes. Okay. Has anyone reviewed May 6th? Angus, Renee, Neri? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I also just came back from not being home for a while, so I haven't been very on top of any of them. Okay. June 3rd. Those were um, Alvaro's. I reviewed those. There's a minor correction. He fixed that. Okay. So, so I, I support the June the, the right. any of, Do you recall? Were they approved? At, at the they were not. They were not. Okay. So we need to have those high out. Alvaro has joined the meeting. And June 17th, I'm expecting that people haven't re uh, reviewed those even, but I have to ask that question if people reviewed June 17. Go back to the June 3rd meet meet meeting minutes. Even I third? reviewed them, Alvaro drafted them. And okay. Does, does anybody else wish to wish for the time to review those or, or can we? Uh, no, I'm listening for anyone else to comment. So, uh, you want? We can move um, to Richard, I think I was late to that one, so I'm not sure if I could comment because I I'm, wasn't there for the duration of the meeting. Right. Oh, thanks, Renee. I can move to approve those. Okay. Second. 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 So that's which date? I'm sorry, June. 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 Uh, Okay, let's move on. So we have two dates that are not approved, May 6th and May and June 17th. Not approved. Hearing on agenda items, only three minutes for residents. Any residents want to speak on agenda items? No comments tonight, thank you. 
going on to new business, Dr. Bukta and uh, Robbie Jai, Jane on biogas from wastewater treatment. Okay. Gentlemen. Yeah, if I might introduce uh, Ravi and myself. Please, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a long term resident of Berkeley Heights for 42 years. And uh, I've worked for many, many years at Exxon Research Labs on carbon capture. And I'm very interested in environmental issues. And Ron Hoke, who used to work here, was pushing me to join this group, but I was busy, so I did not many years ago. Now, after retirement, my friend Ravi Jain, now he used to work for BOC on Mountain Avenue. Some of you may remember, right? And then that company got bought out by uh, what was it? what's his name? Uh, Lente, okay. Lente, right? And uh, Ravi Jain moved out of New Jersey. He loved New Jersey. So he start, he quit and started his own company on carbon capture and using the expertise which he had acquired in BOC. He has, he has invented many processes. And what you're going to hear about is one of his major invention. And uh, it's proven it's, uh, in his lab. He has a pilot plant, which you can go and touch and see. And he's going to talk more about And we need to allow you to share the screen. Okay, can I go for mine? Can I have to share the screen too? Yeah, once you get sharing rights, you can. I think I do. Let's see. That's you, right? Okay. But that's not what you want to show us. <laughs> no, I guess. No, no. Okay. Hold on. Okay, you should be able to, uh, to. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Ramesh, for the introduction. And it's my pleasure to be uh, talking to you about how we can monetize uh, uh, biogas at your wastewater treatment plant. And uh, I'm going to uh, present a few slides and happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, so, in, as uh, Ramesh said, uh, uh, Inosapra was. Uh, uh, Inosapra has extensive development in technology development and commercialization at the BOC Group in New Providence and also at Inosapra. We uh, developed more than 25 technologies that were commercialized in uh, more than 100 plants. Uh, focus at Enosepra has been on development of various carbon mitigation technologies. These include biogas upgrading of power generation and renewable natural gas, uh, low carbon hydrogen, and CO2 capture. Uh, our biogas purification and upgrading technology uh, can reduce the cost of power generation by more than 30% and can reduce the cost of RNG production, which is renewable natural gas by at least 35%. So I guess the question you may ask, what are the benefits to Berkeley Heights if you were to use this technology? Um, the biggest benefit is you would be replacing uh, fossil electricity that you currently use with renewable electricity for your operations. Uh, and then any excess power that you have, uh, you can export to the grid much like a solar panel people have in houses, you, you use whatever power you need and you export extra power to the grid. Uh, and uh, the multiple benefits are a township. Uh, uh, and yeah, uh, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them is, is uh, reduce the township's carbon footprint. I got to reduce your... Uh, uh, reduce township's carbon footprint and also reducing the cost for taxpayer we estimate between seventy-five to one hundred fifty thousand dollars in annual savings, uh, depending on what your current uh, utility bill is. So, in, uh, it is one of the few cases where you can actually become greener, reduce your carbon footprint, and you can actually be profitable. And the reason is the pilot plant that we propose to deploy has been pretty much paid for. There was a grant from California Energy Commission that I'm going to talk about, and then. There is a potential uh, grant from New Jersey EDA. So this is a, a picture of the 
a wastewater treatment plant in Berkeley Heights. Uh, it has an anaerobic digester. It produces 100 to 200 cubic feet per minute of raw, raw biogas, which is a mixture of natural gas, carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen sulfide, and siloxane. This gas is currently being flared and it's a wasted resource. Uh, so what we're planning, uh, what we're proposing to do is uh, clean up this gas to provide both the financial and environmental benefits of downshift. And depending on the application, this gas is worth uh, uh, seven and a half to fourteen dollars a million BTU. Again, I don't know what the cost of the ah, township is, but this is excluding the cleanup cost. And after you account for the uh, energy needed for upgrading, maintenance, operating costs, uh, the the saving to township would be in the range of seventy five to one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. In addition to the environmental benefit, which is basically replacing uh, fossil natural gas with Renewable natural gas. Uh, and uh, so, so we did talk to Township. Uh, we did talk to Township about uh, four years ago, and they provided the composition of biogas. It has about 62% methane, which is essentially natural gas. It has uh, some hydrogen sulfide, some oxygen, and CO2. Uh, there are uh, multiple applications that this gas could be used for. It could be used for heating application, replacing uh, existing uh, natural gas. Uh, and the value there would be about $7 a million BTU. Uh, this can, gas can be upgraded and uh, used to produce power. And uh, uh, that value is about $9 a million BTU. And if you were to use uh, the heat from the biogas, the natural gas engine to heat your digester or uh, heat your facility, uh, combined heat and power, you would have a value of $13 a million BTU. Uh, and this is a, there is an incentive uh, for combined heat and power under the New Jersey, New Jersey Clean Energy Plan. And that's where you get uh, additional benefit in addition to uh, the value that you get from power generation. Uh, there might be additional benefits in the future under New Jersey's Clean Energy Master Plan, but uh, that has not been finalized. So we can't really quantify what the benefit. And I would provide the slides to the township in case you wanted to go in the meeting minutes. So that would be. What is the unit MMBTU? A million BTU. So a 1,000 cubic feet of gas, a natural gas is about a million BTU. Okay, so the MM is million. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so what we propose to do uh, uh, is a, a two-phase plan, uh, and in the phase one, we would uh, uh, upgrade the power plant that was funded by California Energy Commission, uh, install it at Berkeley Heights, and the funding for this phase can come from a, a combination of New Jersey uh, Economic Development Authority grant. Uh, there is a program right now that can provide up to $250,000 uh, for demonstrating a clean energy technology in New Jersey and from AeroSEPRA funds. So there will be no cost of Berkeley Heights for phase one work, but we would need a, a host slide uh, expression of interest letter from Berkeley Heights before July 12th. And the reason is uh, the grant application is due on July 12th. Uh, during phase one, we would test for six to eight weeks to show that the technology actually works. Uh, there is no commitment from Berkeley Heights uh, end of the phase one. If we, uh, we do the testing, we show if the plant works. And Berkeley had said, thank you very much. In our interest, we'll take the whole plant away. And uh, there is no obligation for Berkeley Heights. Uh, end of phase one, we would provide a commercial proposal to Berkeley Heights, uh, either for the sale or lease of equipment for power generation. Uh, and we believe the total cost to get the equipment to commercially ready would be significantly lower than the cost of new equipment. And the reason is uh, most of the plant has been paid for by previous grant uh, from California Energy Commission. And if we get this uh, New Jersey uh, EDA grant, uh, uh, then uh, the incremental cost to, uh, to get a commercial ready will be uh, not very significant. And we're not going to charge Berkeley Heights for any money that has been spent previously. So whatever money has been spent to build the plant, 
and upgrade the plant uh, uh, is uh, essentially you get that for uh, no cost to the township. And as I previously mentioned, uh, there is a likelihood of 10 to 15 percent reduction in power bill, which, uh, uh, as I said, we don't know what your uh, power bill is, but uh, we estimate the saving would be in the range of uh, 75 to 150 thousand dollars a year. Can I ask what print is it that you were referring to the yeah, but, of the cost of the, of the demo? Yeah, the demonstration. Yeah, so you say up there in the second bullet point that a combination of uh. Engine New Jersey economic development. Uh, uh, is that a loan or is that a grant? Uh, that's a grant. That's a grant. And okay. if there is any cost beyond that, we will pay for that. And who would be submitting for that grant? Uh, we, we would be, be submitting. Yeah, you know, some probably be submitting. And do you know what the likelihood of award is? Uh, fairly enough. Uh, okay. Because they're going to. Uh, would this be contingent on receiving that grant approval? Uh, um, I, I think it will be extremely helpful because that's a two hundred fifty thousand dollars that right. neither you know Sakura nor Berkeley has us to spend. Uh, if we were to uh, so put in that money, then we will ask you for some of that. Uh, but if we get the grant uh, and uh, we that get the awesome. money, then we will not ask you for that. So only well, thing we will ask you is whatever money we have to spend beyond the grant to get it commercially ready. Yeah. So as long as Berkeley Heights submits, provides this letter with yeah. the expression of it, interest. At this point, that's that only thing you from you. Berkeley Heights obligation. Uh, you and pursue the grant, and if it's awarded, then move forward. Yeah. Okay. What does that expression of interest so basically mean? It basically said it'd be a letter great. Is that a legal document that is simply saying we're interested, not that we're necessarily committing to this as Berkeley Heights? Uh, that is something we have to, uh, I think it has to be some sort of commitment that we will host the plant uh, because, uh, you know, they want to award the grants to companies right. that will actually, uh, you know, if you say we are interested and we get the grant and you say, uh, we're not interested anymore, then, you know, that's the money that would have been awarded to somebody else. Exactly. Uh, right. That, you know, will not be real. Now, I'm asking that question yeah. because yeah. Uh, July 12th, yeah, we are yeah. right now we're saying 11 days away. Yeah. And I think the next meeting of the town yeah. council is tomorrow? Maybe no, tomorrow no, week. Last, tomorrow. last week. So okay, so uh, a week from tomorrow. I, I think the next meeting is actually in May. Yeah, the, time, the timeline may not be the that's the question because yeah. if the town needs to make an official letter it may have to do that in a meeting township council yeah. meeting and that may have already that ship so, so sale. one so one thing i i could check uh, because there are a bunch of documents uh, <laughs> uh, so there is a, a second deadline for a supplement a submitting supplemental document uh, like we have to provide Tax return and New Jersey tax return form, and the that deadline is August first. July twenty third uh, is the next meeting. Yeah, where? So. Yeah, so I, I, I think if you are interested, you just uh, not provide a commitment letter, but expression of interest letter. And I don't know if you need a township meeting even for that. Uh, That's the question. Right? I mean, <laughs> so I'm not sure what yeah, that. I mean, that would have to be. That would have to go to the township administration. Well, that's a, okay. So the township administration can say whether they can do this. Do you have a sample of that letter? I, I can. We we can provide you a draft. You know, I'll, I'll okay. it by tomorrow. But I need today because um, obviously the township council can can would not be able to make that deadline, and the, no, no, no. and the environmental commission is is not the appropriate. Yeah, to, to yeah. Be, yeah. I think it would just be a slow pass filter <laughs> <laughs> getting it between right. us. And, but um, another question I had was it says testing for six to eight weeks after installation. What's installation and testing? Uh, basically, we would connect the uh, biogas to our plant. We will connect electrical power about 20 kilowatts. Uh, and we would uh, uh, connect the lines to uh, return the gas back to the flare. Uh, so we would be, yeah. So we'll bring the equipment here. We will connect power and the and the and the biogas, uh, and 
uh, and the Ricard line, and we'll make sure that everything is working. So that's probably three to four weeks worth of time. And then we will run the plan for six to eight weeks, make sure that uh, it does what we think it should do. And after that, we will uh, take the data, analyze it, and tell you all uh, if you were to move forward what uh, the cost of township would be for phase two. And, uh, mm -hmm. and if you say, you know, uh, it doesn't look attractive enough for us, okay. then that's the end of the. Uh, well, I remember the last time, I'm roughly remembering that basically the, the uh, water plant said, we have too many other problems we can't even look at. Them. <laughs> sure. um, I don't know what the current status sure. is. Um, I'm not to continue to have problems. <laughs> that's yeah, uh, that's always one of the treatment plans. Right. So I think, I mean, they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, fix the problem, but I don't know where that that is. So the, the and Mr. Kennedy, we should have invited Mr. Kennedy, but I again I was out of town. So. The plant that you're talking about that is cleaning up the biogas. Yeah, it's not generating power. No. So you take the raw biogas in, clean it up, yeah. and then it's back out to the flare. Yeah. So in that pilot phase, we're still flaring off the gas, yeah. but you're just cleaning it up first. Uh, the data you're talking about is showing the clean up no, the so purity of the gas coming out of the plant. So so during the pilot phase that go up, uh, one is we clean up the gas, we give you that gas. And you use that gas for heating application. You can use that gas for heating the digester, mm -hmm. heating the building, mm -hmm. because it's a high purity uh, natural gas. Right. Uh, or if you say we don't want to change the way we are operating right now, uh, in that case, we will combine the two uh, products that we have. One is a natural gas and one is carbon dioxide. And we will give you the gas essentially the same as the one that we got, and you send it to flare. And that doesn't change your existing operation. And it was another option I thought from the last time of using the methane to power vehicles. Am I remember? Yeah, for, I have one. You have that too. <laughs> oh, we didn't finish yet. No, I haven't done yet. So. Please finish. No, no. So, okay. can, can we talk about the installation for a second? Yeah. Um, is the potential, is the cop, does that picture show the thing on the back of a, a tractor trailer? Mm -hmm. Is that sort of the, the way it would? Yeah, it'll, it'll come um, here and it has the lines already in there. Uh, we tested it at the waste management landfill in California. So it has all the pieces that you need mm -hmm. uh, to connect to the biogas source and return the source back. Is, is that 250K? Yeah, that's in about a reasonable estimate for the top cost of installation. Yeah. And so everything that we do in phase one. Either New Jersey EDA or New Okay, okay. we're okay. not asking Township for uh, anything for phase one. And that's not a matching brand. No, it's not a matching And the other thing uh, that uh, is happening is we are applying for a different energy grant. Let's just develop a plan. Is, to develop a plan, that's what I was going to say. Um, so the first phase of that is we'll find out whether we've been awarded that. Right. I mean, and after that township council meeting. After the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> if we got that, that right? I don't know whether we could have, you know, include this in, but that would mean next year we would apply for that um, um, developing that plan. So we this year we would develop the plan and then next year we would uh, get funds to carry out the <laughs> So I'm not sure so if whether could, this would qualify under that grant application. Yeah, there's a, so so timing would actually work out quite well. We would be done uh, if we do get the grant. We would be done with testing in a year. Right. Okay. And at that point, uh, we will do a phase two uh, commercial proposal. Uh, either we sell the equipment to you or lease it. Okay. Uh, and uh, and you could pay for that. Uh, uh, those options through the this uh, brand that you're talking about, so that right. could actually work out quite well. But uh, uh, and as I said, you know, the cost of equipment and commercial ready is going to be uh, one third the cost of the equipment, you know, quite a bit lower than. What and let me ask also, Skylock Saints uh, have commercial use too. Would you be able to 
uh, separate the siloxanes for, for commercial use or not? Uh, there's two laws, so one PP and siloxanes. Ah. Uh, and, 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 and other thing is siloxanes are actually a problem for the uh, engine. They deposit right. on the engine and right. they, uh, you know, so so we would actually take our siloxanes before the gas goes to them. Right. Engine. The engine will freeze, actually. If you put any sellers in the feet. So the um, hydrogen sulfide and the sulfides that you remove, um, you cut those and see the gas and all liquids and then. Well, they said we use the thrower and media to do that. Mm -hmm. So they will uh, bind to the media okay. and we will take it away with us. Mm -hmm. Basically, garbage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do those ever get? Covered from the media or the media? Um, no, media reacts with those materials, they don't get the problem. So it gets landfilled or somehow it's right. Is it landfill? Yeah. But it's a non hazardous uh, uh, material, so it goes to go the sanitary land, but mm -hmm. it's not a hazardous material. Right. And we say you tested this in California, right? And we so, so this is the pilot plant. It's actually on a trailer. There it goes. Uh, yeah, so this is the pilot plant that we're talking about. Uh, we tested for it. <laughs> Uh, we tested for six weeks at the waste management Sydney Valley landfill in California. Uh, the cost to design and build the plant was one and a half million dollars. That was paid by California Energy Commission. Uh, it is a Taylor Mountain plant uh, in Middlesex, New Jersey. Uh, if Township wants to visit it, that's it. We're happy to host you. Uh, and uh, um, the plant can be moved uh, to any location for. For the testing, so we basically drive it down here after we make the modifications. And have that been paid for already when you presented four years ago? Uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, but it, it's not been used for uh, uh, almost four years, so there are going to be some modifications that we have to make, and it's a uh, it's a different upgrading process for power generation, so we have to make. Uh, some changes to the materials and the, so so that's the money that we will uh, hopefully get from New Jersey uh, EDA to make the modifications. So so it's not currently being used. Is that what that uh, not going to be used? And it needs to be modified for use in this particular application. Do you have a document from California that you know what were the results? Yeah, we don't have the results and we can levels of interest. Yeah. 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 This is somewhat uh, difficult to read, but the, the basic idea is that we will take the gas from digesters. Uh, it will go to our uh, pilot unit uh, where we will produce a natural gas rich stream and a carbon dioxide rich stream. And we will recombine those two streams here and send it back to you, and then we will go to fair. But as we talked earlier, uh, if you are interested in this uh, uh, purified biogas for uh, heating uh, applications, we're happy to give you that stream yeah, and uh, just send this uh, uh, the, the CO2 stream for flares. Uh, uh, if you were to move beyond phase one, uh, uh, this is how the process will work. We'll take the raw biogas. Uh, we will separate it in, in a separate process. So the CO2, uh, hydrogen sulfide, and siloxane will be impurities. Uh, uh, that will be uh, 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 leave the process. We'll produce a natural gas with more 92% purity. That will go to natural gas engine, make about 400 to 450 kilowatt hour power uh, that you produce for your own use or export to the grid. Uh, 
the exhaust from the engine can also provide heat for the digester. So uh, if that was something of interest, we can extract that heat and get that back to you. And of course, in the future, you could compress that gas uh, and you can use that uh, near school buses or uh, any of the city vehicles for transportation. So, the, um, the natural gas engine, is that's, that is not something that we currently have at the wastewater well treatment plant, right? Uh, no, you don't have it, but... Uh, so uh, would you provide that as space? Uh, to to yes, we will provide it. How big of an installation is that relative to the purification plant? Uh, it's about third to a quarter of the size, you know, so it's not a very big engine. Uh, so there are two ways you can uh, make power with uh, uh, raw biogas. Uh, uh, you can uh, remove siloxane and hydrogen sulfide, uh, use a biogas engine, which are uh, significantly higher in cost. It has low power and rich in efficiency, and it also has high maintenance costs. And the reason is uh, estuaries and siloxane invariably end up in the engine and they uh, deposit on the uh, engine and then you have to clean it up. And, uh, if we upgrade the gas with our uh, inner technology, you have essentially 100% removal of siloxane and hydrogen sulfide. And in that case, you can use a commodity natural gas engine. You don't need a specialized biogas engine, which are lower in capital, lower, higher in power generation efficiency, and significantly lower maintenance costs. So that why you save, uh, 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 you reduce the cost of power generation. Uh, typically about uh, two and a half cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, it may sound counterintuitive, but if you uh, upgrade the gas and use the, that to make power, uh, the power generation cost is actually lower. And uh, uh, if the upgraded gas is used for on-site uh, uh, CSP, combined heat and power, you have up to a $4 a million BTU uh, in addition to benefits of our power generation, and this is provided under the New Jersey Clean Energy Plan, uh, and you would use the heat from the engine to keep the digest uh, There is an option further down, uh, not right away, but uh, uh, if you decided uh, that you wanted to use uh, uh, this gas for, uh, for, uh, uh, for your school buses, then, then you would have to compress that gas uh, and you would use that as a, a transportation fuel for city trucks uh, or school buses. And that actually provides an additional uh, $7 a million BTO in benefits of a power generation. Uh, you would have to uh, uh, retrofit your trucks and buses, diesel trucks and buses with an natural gas engine, but it's a much cleaner burning fuel and uh, the money that you spend and retrofitting the engine would actually be paid back in this tool. So you do have that option uh, if you wanted to uh, go beyond uh, uh, you know, power generation and change your uh, your school fleet or other city uh, fleet to uh, renewable natural gas and that sort of thing. So what is the current status of buses in Berkeley Heights? Is there a plan to move natural gas? Uh, buses. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, we don't have that kind of information because the school system is separate policy from the township. They contract. I think they the contract. contract. I think exactly. Right. I think they don't own the school buses. But they contract the school buses. So is it a modification to a gasoline engine, or is it a, it's it's a, a, new, engine. a new engine? Yeah. But, but typically, I mean, we have seen uh, in most cases uh, uh, you pay back the cost of retrofitting in less than two. If you have source metal. Yeah, and in this case, you have your yeah. own renewable natural gas. Uh, uh, so, the mm -hmm. are you storing the metal? You're still you will have, you will have to have a. So, so there'd have to be a tank or tanks. You have to have, have a tank. Yeah. So. Fine. How. Um, so your your system removes the hydrogen sulfide siloxanes, and then you separate into C mostly CO two, mostly methane. Yeah. So how much CO two is left in the methane? How much methane is left in the CO two? Uh, 
So you, you would have, uh, you would, uh, you recover more than 98% methane. So whatever methane that came in with your uh, biogas uh, will end up, uh, more than 98% will end up uh, with your methane product. Uh, but you remove about 85%, 85 to 90% CO2. So you will still have some CO2 in the methane product. And if you really want, no, it's not. Not a problem for power generation, mm -hmm. and not a power for uh, transportation application. But if you said, uh, I want to produce a renewable natural gas that could be injected into a uh, PSCNG pipeline or something, right. then we have to remove additional CO2. Yeah. And, and we can do that. We can actually make this gas the same quality as the conventional natural gas, uh, but then of course, there is a additional investment to do that. And the, the CO2 stream with some small amount of methane, what is done with that? Is that flared? Is it just released to the atmosphere? Uh, it, 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 it depends on what the township uh, permit is. Uh, if you cannot remove, release that methane, we would uh, uh, oxidize that methane, convert that to CO2, and release CO2. But if not like catalytically or around yeah. But currently, the CO2 is being released anyway. Yes. There's not a way to reduce that or to somehow do something with that CO2. Uh, well, there is, uh, but at this volume, that's not cost effective. Right. Uh, we are actually proposing to uh, companies like waste management uh, that we capture that CO2 and sequester it. Uh, but we need uh, bigger plants to do that. So, right. Uh, at this year, we have the climate, the effect on the climate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly that's what we're uh, talking about is uh, from landfills, we would uh, 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 produce uh, renewable natural gas and at the same time, we capture carbon dioxide and sequester it. Uh, so it's actually, and if you did that, you're, the whole, uh, if you do a life cycle analysis of the whole plant, it's actually carbon negative. That's not even a carbon neutral. So, uh, so renewable natural gas, sorry, fossil natural gas has a carbon intensity of about 65, which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, gigajoules of, uh, 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 sorry, uh, grams of CO2 per uh, megajoules of uh, energy. Uh, if you, uh, upgrade that gas, make power that reduces to about 40. And if you capture carbon dioxide, it goes below zero. So, so you actually have a, a potentially a carbon negative uh, 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 power generation technology. So there's a lot more capital investment. Not, not a lot more. I think, uh, but you need a volume. You need uh, at least 1,000 SCFM or more. To make the carbon capture a while because mm -hmm. you have to send it to some place where it can be injected underground right. and, and sequestered. So, for this volume, that's that's, not I think there's still more technology. Yeah, you have one that you're saying has been very large and also is very site specific. And this is a place here locally, I'm right. injected in the Echo Fire or something. You know, it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Anything else? Uh, that's all. That's all, yeah. Okay. Anybody online have any questions? What are any questions? Uh, you talked about the potential saving in terms of um, either fuel cost saving or what we could recoup uh, in power. Reason power. Um, there's also the media, the media used to, to trap the hydrogen um, yeah. sulfide and sulfides. Um, does that saving count for the cost of the media? Yes. Yes. So that's a net save. Yeah, that's the net. How often do you have to dump the uh, media? Uh, once or twice a year. Thank <clears throat> you.
not hearing any other, anyone else? Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for your question. Thank you. That's very interesting. We should try to get Mr. Kennedy to listen to your presentations. I will try to contact him soon. Happy to come down in the next couple of days. I know Fourth of July, the township was. Yes. Fourth of July is a Thursday, so that means probably most people are taking Friday. Yeah. Um, time scale is very tight. Uh, well, it is. Okay. Unfortunately, you know, this thing didn't come out until the beginning of June, and be looking for a time to get, you know. Uh, get the meeting with the township. I mean, I, 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 I think if we can make it uh, at least uh, some sort of a conditional level of support uh, with the grant, and we can uh, turn that into a commitment level. And as you said, you send the draft. Yeah, draft. We'll send the draft to uh, who should uh, we send the draft? Yeah, send it to ECF. Okay, we'll do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Scott projects. Of plans. Of plans. Plans. Plans, of course. <laughs> Six, four, nine. I feel heavy. I'm having a demo of a time trying to work on my um, type of trying to type stuff. Just wasn't doing things. Six, four, nine is good for that. We discussed this uh, uh, by email. Uh, and this is simply to confirm that uh, basically this is the TRC at this point. This is not uh, coming before the board yet. But uh, Connie Valenti asked us if we have any comments. And uh, basically, we said in an email that uh, um, perhaps we could express interest in whether a bio retention area could be created. The uh, plans show that the reducing impervious uh, uh, area uh, at this site, um, which is a good thing. Uh, we were asking whether it might be possible to install bioretention to retain such stone. And do we have any comments on this? No comments. Okay. If not, then uh, we're formally formally uh, approving this. So I would entertain a motion. Uh, I move that we submit and reply to TRC the recommendations to add a bio retention basin. Okay, second. Second. Okay, David Harris seconds and moved by Albert. On to Scott Burton. David? Um, scout project. So two quick things there. Um, the potential addition of a pollinator garden adjacent to the community garden. Um, that may be suitable for an Eagle Scout project, some of them 368. Um, so the, the truth is following up on that. And then I did just this evening connect in May with Chris Barbaroma of Troop 368 Excellent. with a view to any other minor or lesser projects at the Eagle Scout.
And Renee, this could be sort of one-off minor projects on a smaller scale. Could be one-off, could be recurring. Yep. No, thank you for making the connection, um, acknowledging receipt, and you know, I'll tuck that name away in a safe place. Um, now, just going back to the. Well, Major Gotten. Yes. I think that the topic, I mean, oversight of any scout project by anyone from the community garden will be difficult because um, it's a small team, everyone's stretched. So I think Richard, you were copied on, on those emails. Um, what, what would the oversight look like? Would there need to be anything required from the community garden members? So if you're creating another garden that the community garden wants to have, then I uh, certainly, once that garden is created, I, I would expect the, the community garden would maintain it. What would that mean? Uh, you know, with any kind of uh, a um, flower bed, uh, you need to do normal maintenance, which would probably be uh, uh, weeding once or twice during the season, uh, maybe mulching if that's needed. Um, so uh, that would be an ongoing responsibility. The creation of some sort of rain garden, if we're going to call it a rain garden, would have to be done by someone who's got um uh, expertise in doing rain parts, even though there's our um manuals for creating rain parts. And uh there are a couple of people who could do that. I would be one of them, and uh another person who is a master gardener uh uh could also do that. Okay. Yeah, so because I, I... I would not expect to put that burden that is the on the on the community gardens, I would expect that the environmental commission would find someone to supervise or to advise the people scout, just as um, I did when we created the um, rain garden at Mountain Park. Well, turn it to, to Rutgers. What's about the case there? Help. That's a more complicated issue um, for a single garden. I can certainly ask whether there that would be an option, Chris. But normally, Rutgers is involved in larger projects and multiple rain gardens. But there's another announcement I need to make, and I'll make that at the end. So back, back to the question you asked, uh, Renee, about support from the community garden. Um, if it becomes an Eagle Scout project, um, so the community garden would be the recipient, I guess, of the project. So there'd be a certain amount of um, input needed from the community garden to, to establish that need. And, um, but in terms of day-to-day -day supervision of the work, that would, I guess, fall primarily on the scout. Okay, so there's to some extent two, two sides to that. One is the community garden should formalize its interest in creating this additional garden, yeah. which would be just outside the fence. Um, I'm not sure how much people have. Uh, seen what was going on just outside the fence, but that area is down <laughs> from uh, an area that gets very wet and gets rainwater runoff. So you do have that water infiltrating into the community garden, and that's where the basis was for this. Uh, yeah. So then Steve and I looked at that site. Steve had looked at um, a YouTube video that 
where someone said, oh, just dig a hole and put some gravel in the hole, and that will allow the water to penetrate into the hole. It's possible that could happen, but what you're talking about, I mean, we're talking here about an area that extends from the corner of the garden to the middle of, of, of the garden along the fence. In other words, it's along the fence for about 40 feet. So that gets puddle, gets a heavy puddle when there's uh, enough rain. So that's the, that's the challenge of trying to correct that. Uh, and uh, if you were going to say, oh, I'm going to put a, a hole uh, and put some uh, 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 gravel in, in there, that's just one little spot. You may have to do for the whole 40 feet. That's basically the, doing the same thing as a, a, a rain garden does you. you uh, uh, Dig a, a shallow bowl, make uh, a berm along the edge. You uh, amend the soil that's left because you're digging up the, the lawn. You're taking the turf and putting it to the side. And you're amending that soil that's below the lawn. And then you're planting in that uh, soil appropriate plants for that site. Plant, the site is somewhat shaded then you choose plants that will do well uh, with partial shade or, or more. The, the site is at the edge of a trip line of some large trees. You don't want to dig into where those large trees are uh, because you would be affecting uh, uh, them by uh, destroying the roots. So, this would be limited to about four feet a long, wide uh, bed that would run along the edge of the. What size, okay. what size is this proposed to be, uh, the garden? Is this proposed to be? Is it uh, the western side? It's the uh, eastern side, northeast oh, side. The northeast side. Yeah. So there's the irrigation, the the irrigation. Uh, um, controls are in the middle there, and the water has been running in into uh, and across the irrigation. Control. So they rewire the irrigation control so they're three feet above the um, area where the water is. So that's why you would have a berm along the fence so as to basically prevent the water from going into there and allow the water to seep down in, out, and then flow away. The, the difference in the slope is a couple of inches apparently from the corner to the middle. So 40, over 40 feet, the difference of slope is maybe three or four inches. Yeah, but it's, the slope is going towards the garden. So you want to I'll level that out so that it work that. So did I misunderstand something? Is there a pollinator garden associated with it, or is it just a rain garden? It would be kind of a, a, a garden that would have perennial flowers. So you can do that. You can create a garden. So it would serve both purposes. <laughs> Any other comments or question? Just, just again to reiterate the concern um, when there was the, the other Eagle Scout project um, building the wheelchair accessible pathway. There was a lot of oversight that the community garden member members had to provide. Um, so that that's that's why this is coming up. I you know it's understood that once the the garden's built that you know. It needs to be watered, weeded, maintained. It's more of, of you know, overseeing the project itself. I mean, I think there there does need to be a conversation about, you know, agreeing, aligning on specifications and all of that. But beyond that, I think the vision would be that someone else would supervise it to completion and then community garden would just maintain after that. 
Is right. that okay? Uh, that, that's my recommendation that the garden, community garden committee uh, itself say, oh, we're interested in having this done and have a, an official meeting, record the minutes so that you're in agreement and then uh, send the, that recommendation to the environmental commission and the environmental commission would find someone to supervise or assist the, the um, Eagle Scout would take some project just as we did for the Mountain Park project. So I guess the principle is if that um, sort of statement of need that Richard referred to is comprehensive and covers all that you need for that project to deliver, that kind of should satisfy your um, the requirements as far as the gardens and so garden committees and stuff. Does that make sense? Once you've specified what the need is, we can take it. Right. And also the commitment to to your basic maintenance um, in the garden. So you're, you know, once that garden is created, the community garden committee is saying that we they it would take responsibility for maintaining the garden. Yep. And I mean another option could be to ask for uh scout volunteers to help maintain it. If if you know because there there is a lot going on, right? Um it's fantastic the number of projects that the community garden has been able to implement, but now it's it's managing it and day-to-day -day lives and gardens and things, you know? So um, I'll take an action then to speak with the community garden team and have a discussion and we can, I guess, talk about next steps at the next meeting. And Renee, that, I mean, that's the point. You could say you could find someone else to maintain that garden, mm -hmm. but that needs to be done up front. Whoever is... Yeah trying to take care of that garden. Otherwise, I would say we should not move forward with this project. We need to know that somebody is going to take care of that once it's created. Right, yeah, because we don't want there to be all this effort put forth and then for it to just fall apart. Right. Yeah, okay, understood. Thank you. No, thank you, already. And no other updates from Community Garden. I know those were kind of two topics that we bundled, but they were next to each other conveniently. So, right, right. Stormwater ordinance. I don't have any update on that. Dr. Drain and Kim, you're there. Do you have anything? Uh, no updates at this time. Okay. Sustainable Jersey application. So, we need to revise our Sustainable Jersey application. It's been opened up. They have reviewed it. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, but you should have all seen the email from Sustainable Jersey saying we need to uh, do any revisions so that we can continue to be certified. Cycling and cleanups. Okay, back to David or Johnson. My understanding was that uh, um, Pat Shanley has been traveling, will be traveling most of the summer, so she will not be too available. If she does become available, she will let people know. Anything else on recycling meetings? That's all. I've, I've got nothing more than that. Topics for the Township Newsletter. That deadline just passed on June 27th, I will away. Did we do anything, Angus? No, we decided at this juncture there wasn't really uh... You know, it's a it's a low season, so we skipped for this month. Okay. Except for the park and trail, we've got just part of that with the recycling cleanups. Grants, the RGGI grant um, uh, will be looking to plant again in the fall. Uh, we're looking to revise uh, some things on the grant, so we have to uh, submit uh, that revision to the state. Uh, and did I share with everyone that I attended a meeting where uh, another town uh, 
and New Jersey also received the, the RGI GGI grant, but they still have not received an approval from the state. So they are still waiting to be to receive formal approval for their project. So we're going for an amendment. <laughs> and we're going for an amendment. B City USA resolution. I do not know what the status is on this. I will try to find out uh, because uh, uh, Carolyn George said that she would meet with the rec department uh, to say whether uh, she would take on uh, a name uh, that uh, she would be the contact for uh, the B City resolution. Wayside, we don't have any. So the, uh, there was supposed to be uh, brought up at a township meeting, the BCDUSA resolution, and I don't think that happened. I've got to contact the um, mayor about that. One other thing before we open up to anything else, um, uh, the, the mayor has, a, has appointed a Chris Venter, who is uh, a master gardener. She has approved, uh, appointed him to be to replace Eduardo Vegan as a um, environmental commissioner. You said that name again, so I can capture it. V e n t e r. Microsoft Venison. Effective immediately or? Effective, it was effective the other day. She just did it. She wanted to talk with him, but apparently she has a very tight schedule and she decided she would just uh, um, issue an, an executive order she said she, to appoint him. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else before we open up to guests? No. No. Okay. Well, Steve Corrales. Yes. Hello there. Interesting presentation. And I, I, I think I picked up the, the gist. You got it. Your, your, um, uh, Ch changing an uh, environmental commissioner is what I think I heard at the end. A new environmental commissioner to replace Eduardo, who has resigned. Oh, okay. And yeah, I heard of Eduardo, and and I, in, in quite saying his name for David to uh, write down, I I couldn't quite make it out. Could you say it and spell it? Okay. Who Eduardo's name or no 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 the new one the new guy Chris Venter B E N T E R B E N T E R. Did you say Chris? Chris, Christopher. Just got it. Hey, thank you. That's all I got. All right. Well, 842. Anybody else? If not, do I hear a motion? So, so moved. And second. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, I don't know if it's too early to talk about this, but um, because I won't be at the next meeting. Um, we have our uh Union County Hub. Oh, right. For... I'm sorry, Angus, that that's I'm glad you remembered. I'm sorry, I forgot. Go ahead. Yes. So on Monday, um, July 8, uh, we will have our Union County Hub meeting in the multi-purpose room downstairs um, at 7 o'clock p.m. And, uh, you know, that'll be all the union, you know, all the different members of the Union County Green Teams and Environmental Commission. So Monday at the multi-purpose room, Seven o'clock. Um, I'm going to start setting up probably about six fifteen to six thirty. Question on that, Angus. Maybe you saw this other email from the Westfield Green team inviting people to go to Summit uh, to the what the heck is it called Summit House or uh, oh Sustainable House, Sustainable House, right? For uh, right. Kind of meet and chat. And I forgot what day was that? I 
didn't get a chance to see that. It's, I think it's a week later, after July 8th. I think it's July 11th or something. July, is it one full week later? I'll, we'll, we'll look it up. Yeah, I'm sure it's exactly a, a week. See. Sustainable House? Yes. Did they email? It was an email, yes. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, wait, this is not the same email. All right, I'll have to find that email. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not finding it immediately on my phone. My phone, I, I cannot rely on for finding emails. Let me see if I can. West here, green team. Okay, so it's saying you're invited Westfield Green Team Summer, I'm sorry, social Sunday, July 21, 5 to 8 p.m. Sunday, July 21? Yes. Okay. 8 p.m. at Sustainable House and Summer. Got it. Yeah, I won't be able to be there. I'll be in uh, Asia, but, but you guys are all welcome to join. <laughs> No, I, okay. I, my question was going to be, uh, okay, so we're doing a social thing, or they're doing a social thing on July 21. But I guess that's a couple of weeks after July 8th. Okay. Yep. So, um, Angus, you're managing planning the agenda for the hub meeting? Uh, Lauren, uh, whatever her last name is, Lauren, uh, Galronsky. thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Kim. Um, yes, she's managing the agenda, uh, for that day. You're just providing support. Yes. Yes. We're providing the room and technical assistance. Oh. So next week. Okay. Then, All right. do I hear a motion again? <laughs> I move to adjourn at 846. Second. Second. Okay, thanks so much for everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I will end uh, the recording.